Hello friend, in the Formula Engineering Classroom. In the last lecture, we discussed about the Pascal's law. In this lecture, we will discuss about the hydrostatic law. So what is hydrostatic law? And what do you think when you are standing on the earth's surface? Is there any pressure difference over your head and below your feet? And this pressure is ignorable? This pressure difference is ignorable or not? And if let you are standing under water, in that case, is there any pressure difference over your head and below your feet? So let find out by the use of hydrostatic law. So let just a minute. So let's suppose this is the free surface of fluid. And that in this free surface or in this fluid, static fluid, we are considering because we are saying hydrostatic, there is fluid at rest condition. So, in this static fluid that we are considering, a cylindrical fluid element. So, we are considering a cylindrical fluid element over here. Okay. So, let the top face of this cylindrical element is y distance below the free surface and let's suppose the height of the cylindrical element is dy and that area of the cylinder is da okay so the area is da, the upper surface is y distance below and the height of the cylinder is dy. So as this fluid element in the static fluid or in fluid in rest condition, so the forces acting on this element is only one surface force that is the pressure and one mass force or body force that is the weight of this element. There is no inertia here, there is no viscous forces here, there is no acceleration forces here because the fluid is at rest condition so on the upper face we can consider the upper face of this element let's suppose the pressure intensity is P that we are saying this pressure intensity is P over here and let's suppose we are considering the pressure is variable over this height let here the pressure we are saying that this is P plus del P by del Y dy so this del p by del y dy is actually the change of pressure over this one over this height so this is the overall pressure intensity at the lower face and the another force when we are considering this is the weight of the element here that is acting in downward direction due to the gravitational acceleration here that is w so in this case as we discussed the forces in this case are pressure force and the weight of the element other forces we are saying that is the viscous forces accelerating forces and the inertia forces are not available here so let's consider the forces in this y direction so we are considering forces in y direction Okay, so let's suppose first of all this pressure force over this top face of this element. So this is acting in downward direction, that is in negative y direction. So the pressure force over this top face is due to the pressure intensity P over the area dA. So we can write this is equals to minus P dA. And the pressure force on the lower face is P plus del P upon del Y dy into the area dA that is acting in positive y direction so we can write this is plus P plus del P by del Y dy into dA okay now the weight of the element is acting in downward direction that is in negative y direction so we can write minus W and this net force will be equals to zero 
because the fluid is at rest condition so there is no inertia force here so by solving this equation we can say there is minus PDA and this is plus PDA so this term is out so remaining terms are plus del P by del Y into dy dA minus W equals to zero now we can calculate the weight of the element so we can write that is weight of the element is equal to the specific weight of fluid into volume of the element so specific weight of fluid we are considering small w and the volume of this element is dA dy this is the volume dA is the area dy is the height so by substituting this value of w in this equation we can write this is plus del p by del y dy dA minus w dA dy equals to zero so in equation the term dA dy is going to be out so here we can write this is del p by del y minus w equals to zero okay now the p is the only function of y that is the depth of fluid in this case this is not the function of x and z so we can write del there is a partial derivative to d because p is the only function of y and it's not the function of x and z so we can write this one so from this equation that i'm using this space here i'm using this space over here so i'm writing that is sorry this is not del this is t so tp by dy is equals to specific weight w or we can write dp is equals to w dy now as we want to calculate the force we can integrate this one that is the pressure sorry not force pressure we can integrate this one and as w is the fluid property there is the specific weight this is a constant so during the integration we can write w out of integral and by integrating this one we can write this is equals to w y okay this is termed as hydrostatic law this is hydrostatic law and this can also write as so p is equals to w w we can write rho g y this is our hydrostatic law this is our hydrostatic law okay this is our hydrostatic law so according to this law we can see here that is pressure is equals to specific weight of fluid into the depth of fluid element or some body below the free surface so what is the meaning of this law and how can we analyze this one so let's see so as we know there is according to hydrostatic law p equals to w y or rho g y so for a particular fluid we can say that there is w is constant because this is the property of fluid so this is constant or taking this as a constant we can say there is pressure is directly proportional to y as we are considering w is constant so we can say that is pressure is directly proportional to y this means as y increases the pressure intensity also increases as the y decreases pressure intensity intensity also decreases so as y increases pressure also increases so in this diagram over the face that is the top face the pressure intensity is small 
and as the depth increases that is over here this is y plus dy the pressure intensity will be higher so and we can see here this is directly proportional and linearly proportional p is linearly proportional to y so we can see the variations of pressure over here like that if we let if i'm considering a line over here this is this face here this is this face here so in that case this is a linear distribution like that these arrows are presenting the intensity of pressure along the height or depth of fluid it's linearly increasing with y this arrow is presenting the pressure intensity so here the pressure intensity is p or let we are saying p1 and this is the pressure intensity p2 and obviously in this case p2 is greater than p1 okay so means as depth increases the pressure also increases and this is the hydrostatic law okay so let's discuss about what if w is going to be changed means for the what happened for the different different kind of fluid so let's suppose here i'm considering water this is water and let there is some body over here this is body and let this distance is y1 and let this distance is y2 okay and we are saying this is water so over here according to hydrostatic law the distribution of pressure will look like this one so this one we are saying p1 that is equals to let w of water we are presenting by w1 okay well, let's simply w not w1 so this is w y1 and this is equals to w y2 as usual as we saw from according to the hydrostatic law so for a different fluid let if i'm considering mercury so this is our mercury and we are considering the same body over here at the same distance so i'm taking this plane over here this distance is y1 as usual this distance is y2 and this is mercury and let's specific weight of mercury we are defined by whg and we know specific weight of mercury is 13.6 times of specific weight of water as according to our property we discussed g is equals to 13.6 times of water so as height is same but this one is higher in case of mercury so in that case the intensity of pressure at the same level but in mercury will be much higher compared to this one that is 13.6 times higher so here the slope of this line will increase and it will look like this one it will look like this one in the different fluid that is mercury in the heavier fluid the intensity of pressure at the same level for the same body will be higher so let i'm writing this is p1 dash so p1 dash will be equals to w of mercury into y1 and this is p2 dash that is w of hg into y2 so this we can write that is p1 dash is greater than p1 and p2 dash is greater than p2 okay so as the w increases at the same depth for the heavier fluid the intensity of pressure will be higher 
this is according to the hydrostatic law and now as we discussed earlier if let we are standing under water okay so this height above our head free surface is at h1 distance and over here at this distance is h2 so in this case definitely there is a different different pressure intensities are acting over our head and below our feet it will look like this one in this case sorry let's this is just a minute so this is acting like that so over our head the pressure is less and below our feet the pressure is high okay so this is our hydrostatic law in the next lecture we will discuss more about the hydrostatic law and its application and we will combine and we will see the combined effect of pascal's law and the hydrostatic law till then take care of yourself thanks for watching